Good morning and good evening. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, today I'm, I'm going to share a devotional talk on the faith of Noah and what happened in his life. So before we begin, I'm going to kneel for the word of prayer. So pray with me. Father in heaven, we come before you. We want to thank you so much for the Sabbath and also the opportunity to come together. I pray now, Father, that as we read your word, I pray that you will impress us with your spirit and be with me as I share, Father. I pray that the grace you have given to me through Christ, that in everything, we are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. So I ask that you will speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. So to begin, I want to go to the book of Hebrews 11, 7. And the title of our study is The Faith That Condemns the World. So what is that faith that we must have that condemns the world? So in Hebrews eleven seven, we have we have this. By faith, Noah, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, not seen as yet, moved with fear, he prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by which is by faith. So this scripture really stood out to me that by faith, Noah. He was warned of God of the things not seen as yet. He moved with fear. And he prepared an ark. The ark was for the saving of his, his house. And it says here that by that faith, by thy which he condemned the world, and he became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. So the, the faith of Noah was rooted in had, it, had its origin in the word of God, the warning that God gave to him. So that warning was, was specifically where of things that was not yet seen. There was never been a flood, there's never been rain. So this warning that God has given him was, was rooted in his word of things that he did not, that nobody has seen, that no human eye could perceive. And so this faith, it says that he was moved with fear that he prepared an ark. He prepared an ark for the saving of his house. So if he didn't prepare this ark, his house would not be saved. So it was, a, it was his duty to prepare this ark for the salvation not only of himself, but also his house. But I want to point out something in this scripture in Hebrews eleven seven, 7, that says that it was a move with fear. It was a movement with fear that he prepared the ark, but it was not a move that was for being afraid of something. It was, it was a move in fear, in piety, in reverence, being, being cautious of any danger, being careful because of the fatal consequences of not making preparations for what God has said. So I want to just point that out, to look, that, to look at an example of what it means to fear, to move with fear. We go to, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 23, verse 10. Acts 23, verse 10. And this is an example of what it, mean, what it means to fear, you know? And it says here, when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing less, lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them. And to bring them and to bring him into the castle. Here we have an example of somebody who feared. He feared that Paul will be turning to pieces, and he made preparations. He commanded the soldiers to come down, to take him by force, and to bring him from among them, and to bring him into the castle. So what it means where, where, where Noah moved with fear, he moved with caution because he saw the consequences of, 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 of the importance of what God has said. So, so we move with fear. We move with fear is to be cautious, to be to be diligent, to be very careful in every in every move. So, 
with with that understanding of Noah, we also know that Noah also preached. He preached. He had a message to preach, and he was called the preacher of righteousness. But in this scripture in Hebrews eleven seven, it says that he prepared an ark. He was moved. He moved with fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household. So Noah preached, and he had a preparation also as well to make. So he he had a he had the precept of the word of God. And he also had to, by example, live out that message. So turn with me to Genesis 6, 22 and Genesis 7, 1. And we're going to see how Moses, how, excuse me, how Noah was faithful to what God has uh, entrusted to him. He was obedient to the warning that he gave. So in Genesis 6, 22 says, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. In, in chapter 7, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and in all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteous or just before me in this generation. So Noah was obedient to all that God had commanded him. And God said that he was, he was found him righteous before that generation. So my question to us, as we look at the scriptures, what was the condition of that generation in the days of Noah. If we read uh, the verses preceding in Genesis 6, verses 9 through 13, speaks about the generations of Noah and the condition that it was in the world then. Starting at verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was the just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth, verse, 10, verse 11, and the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the world, and behold, it was corrupt. For what reason? It was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And then, then, verse 13, God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence to them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So here, the condition of the, of the world, they were filled with violence. But it gives us the reason why they were corrupt. Because all flesh had corrupted his, his way upon the earth. And God brought upon, upon the flood to destroy them with the earth. So the question that the Lord was leading me this week, in what way, in one of the ways that they were corrupted? We found, we found some of the details of the answer in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. So in what way they were corrupted? We're familiar with this passage in Matthew 24, verse 37 through 39. But as, as the days of Noah were, so shall it be, so shall it, so, so excuse me, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew it not until the flood came and took them all the way, all the way. So shall, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So in what way they were corrupted? In all, all of them were corrupted in his way in the eating and in the drinking and then in marrying and giving in marriage. They were filled with these, these two things. They were doing these two things. They were having, they were just eating and drinking and they were marrying and giving in marriage. See, one thing that we have here in common between eating and drinking and also marrying and given in marriage is, is desire. It is the desire of appetite and passion. They were, they have diverted themselves in these two things of what God has given them. And it says here that only until the flood came, they knew and they understand the destruction that, that was upon them. It says here that they knew not until the flood came. They knew not. But yet again, Noah, didn't, didn't they see Noah 
built the ark, made preparations, then didn't hear nor preaching the warning that the flood was coming. He was a preacher of righteousness and he prepared an ark. So they knew, they were aware, but because of the condition of, their, of, of the world, they were corrupt in their way, their perverted appetites and passions, they were not able to perceive, they will not be able to understand the warning that God has given them. So, so now it is the same thing for us. It says Jesus that the coming of the Son of Man is as it is in the days of Noah. In the, in the busyness of life, where people are just carrying on with eating and drinking and they're involving marriage or giving in, giving in marriage and marrying until it will be too late. So the preparation that Noah had for building an ark was for the preservation, was for the preserving of him and his household and whoever he heeded that message. It was only eight that, that entered into the ark. So the same thing for us. We have a message that is accompanying with the message that we have to give in God's word. It is that message that brings preparation. So what is that message that brought preparation that is going to bring preparation and reservation for us today? If you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 5.23, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. I pray you, pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. See, in this scripture, we have that there is a preservation of our entire being or our, our whole spirit, our whole soul, our whole body must be preserved blameless unto the coming of the day of, of the day of God, the day, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a preservation for us. There is a preservation that we have to preserve our spirit, our soul, and body to be preserved in a blameless manner until the coming of Jesus Christ. But the promise is in verse 24 that. Faithful is he that calls us to that standard, and he also will do it. And with this, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you. And thank you, Father, for your mercies, for your word says that you are the God of peace. You're not wanting us to be destroyed. You don't want us to miss out on heaven. And your word says that faithful is he that calleth us, that you also will do it, that you will preserve our entire body, a whole spirit, our whole soul, our whole body, you preserve blameless until the coming of your son. I pray, Father, that you will work in us both to will and to do of your, of your good pleasure, that we may have the faith that Noah had, that he made preparations, that he moved with fear and made preparations, that we may have that faith that condemns the world. And when we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.